welcome, welcome to Cocktails and Conversation Breeders' Cup Week Special. I bet you thought we would never reach this point. Episode 28, 29, 30, I think we've I've lost, lost count. count. But one thing I never thought, all the way back oh, yeah. on April the 2nd, was that we would finally be reunited. Well, I think that you did think that, because after episode one, you said, we'll see you next week, and we haven't stopped. But I never thought I'd actually make it to the United States. I mean, plenty of people have asked how, but never mind that, we're here. Mm -hmm. You're here. And we're all set we for the We are in the cup. same vicinity. We're keeping things socially distanced, of course, but we have a really fun show on tap, a special Breeders' Cup edition, as we are just a couple days away. Well, we don't just throw this show together. If you remember last week when I was in the comfort of my garage, as you like to call it, back in Teddington, Southwest London, and you were out on the West Coast, mm -hmm. we were asking you your favorite guests of the season had been. And so we put all the answers together, we got on the phone, and they're all going to be joining us. So who are we going to start with, Britt? Well, we've got Tom Amos, who's sending out Serengeti Empress in the Philly and Mare Sprint. We also have John Velasquez. We also have Brad Cox, Wesley Ward, and Kenny McPeak. We have an absolutely loaded guest list tonight. It's going to be a lot of fun, but means we're going to keep things rocking and rolling. But we're missing somebody we right are. now. We, we are. are. We are missing somebody. Now, last week, he was there with being, being sort of sandwiched by two <laughs> inordinately large grand pianos. They were Where beautiful is, though. They were beautiful. Who needs one when you can have two? But you couldn't have two of this man because he is just distilled perfection. Mixologist Mark Tuberty. We are nothing without you, sir. <laughs> Guys, it is Cheers. so good to see you. Cheers. And great to see you together. You look fantastic. You are absolutely in front of a much more professional bar than I am at the moment. So cheers to you guys. After a year of these episodes, you guys could be professional mixologists at this point, I think. Aww. I think we're going to try. He's, At least tonight, we're going to try our best. He's looking so dapper, so well-groomed, the beard <laughs> immaculately trimmed, and some candles just there on mm -hmm. the back wall, the exposed brick wall, Mark. It, Trying it's, to set the you, mood. You're getting that, kind of, you're getting that sort of mid-market spa vibe going perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> we do uh, shiatsu massages on the side, and there's a pedicure station. Oh, wow. so, yeah. It's, you know, it's... During quarantine, you, you got to hustle, and I'm not bartending, so I'm trying to make an extra buck. <laughs> but no, set, setting the mood here and excited for an amazing show. This is going to be fantastic. A lot of fun. Well, we have to say a big hello to those of you watching from wherever you are. Thanks for joining us and the continued support here of Breeders' Cup Cocktails and Conversations. Of course, we've got plenty of conversations. Mark, what's on tap tonight for the cocktails? We are going back to the beginning. We are making our two official Breeders' Cup Cocktails and when I say we, it really is we, because I know you guys are set up, so we're going to be making some Tory Cups, and then later on tonight, the Garland as well. So we're going to get in the mood for Breeders' Cup weekends and uh, make some fantastic drinks. I'm really, really excited Mark, for it. Mark, are you going to, you're going to mark us tonight, aren't you, on our, on our prowess? I'm going to do my best to, to evaluate. I have to say, you guys, especially with the Tito's in the background and the Maker's Mark, it looks almost like you're at a cocktail competition. So I think I might have to assess visually the drinks that you make and see if I can crown a winner to uh, kick things off for this racing weekend. But I'm sure you're both going to do a fantastic job. Well, I think we can each assess our own. I'm already giving myself an A+. Plus. <laughs> <laughs> no, no change there. Uh, Mark, we have to, you're quite right, mm -hmm. recognize Makers Mark and, and Tito's who've been great partners for this show all the way along. But also yeah. our mascot this evening, our special mascot, <laughs> as you can see at the front of the desk, this is Fanny. Provided by Big Ass Fans, uh, one of the Breeders' Cup sponsors. Um, say hello to Fanny, Mark. Hi, Fanny. There we are. <laughs> Fanny's looking wonderful there. But uh, the biggest difference, of course, about this year's Breeders' Cup is the lack of fans. And we know how much we miss them. And that is why this has been started to really connect with the fans. But we have so many ways which people can get involved and excited in this year's Breeders' Cup. Have you tried out the photo filter? No. Well, you should. Okay. Head on over to Instagram. You can get that photo filter or breederscup.com slash photo filter. Is that you? Wow. That is not me, but I really love that hat. Nick is about Ooh, to bring out the, uh, the picture from the magazine, I think. Mm -hmm. No. It's gorgeous. <laughs> See, this is the big thing is you want to enjoy the Breeders' Cup as if you were with there. So why not get dressed up, make a few cocktails with us, and then, of course, Take a photo. Hashtag my Breeders' Cup, and we'll get that trending. Hey, listen, Brittany, all our favorites are with us this evening. Jennifer Pinkerton Cook, good evening. Confession, it's late. We've already made the, the first drink. Julie Dodson Forrest is in. Tito's is my favorite vodka. She says, Roberto Costa's in. Saludos desde Uruguay. 
It's like in Vassour all over again, 2006. <laughs> Annie Matheson, cheers. Dorian Dickinson's in. Mm -hmm. Glad we're getting the redo on the Torrey Cup and the Garland. Mary Jane McKittrick is in the house as well. Uh, Mikhail Latas Wisniewski, all the easy, easily pronounceable names. Julie Ingalls here, Jeff Hall. <laughs> <laughs> the whole gang. The whole gang it's is just, here. It's just a family, isn't it, Bruce? It does. I wish we could all be together. It is a celebration. Is. I, we were speaking of um, what everyone's wearing, right? Mm -hmm. This is a big thing for the Breeders' Cup, right? Yeah. I've been thinking about it forever. People at home, when they're watching the Breeders' Cup, they've been getting dressed up. How long have you been thinking about your outfit for the two days? Oh, I mean, practically since March. Mm -hmm. I, I'm sure, <laughs> because you're going to be entered in the Longines Prize of Excellence, right? But uh, as usual, I'll just probably wear a white shirt and navy suit and a <laughs> Purple tie, so no, no, no top hat. No, no top, top hat today, Mark. Ah. You know, I think I would add something special, though. You don't see it here. It's kind of you know you find it everywhere at Royal Ascot. But what if you brought the top hat over for Breeders' Cup? I think I look like a plum. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, I just want to make fun of you. So please wear hey, it one day, <laughs> uh, Mark. I'm, I'm looking forward to to getting a bit of Mark Tuberty. Um, you've, you know, you've got a perfect hold on that. You're going to do Thank excellent. You. Now, so the trick then is getting it into the tin itself. Because I do have to admit, when I started with that flourish, it looked good while I was holding it. And then when I went to pour the liquid in, it went all over the place. So that's going to be the main challenge for you tonight. But I believe in you. I think you're going to nail it. Okay. I love it. We got everyone getting involved. Leanne Burns says, hello from Thunder Bay, Ontario. Hashtag Breeders' Cup at home. And just one more note on that Longines Prize of Excellence, because there is something on the line there. Get dressed up, hashtag BC20 in style. You wanna post your photo of your race day look using hashtag mm -hmm. my breeders cup and you could enter to win a chance for a beautiful Longines timepiece. Do you have your Longines timepiece on? I mean, of course is, you did. I mean, this is outrageous, isn't it? I do have my Longines timepiece on. Naturally. It's the, by the way, it's the, Longines, <laughs> it's the Longines prize for elegance. Yeah. It is, and you have your Longines watch on. I've seen enough now. I, That's yeah. enough. I, I know. What, enough what I love about this episode already is we can hear our producers laughing you know in the background. He, <laughs> right. he, he, we just... he didn't plan that, but hey, Carson is hosting <laughs> and judging. Good. I don't know what he would say about this getup, though. Well, we, what's wrong with this getup? Well, you know, it's um, aside from your Longines timepiece, it's, it's lovely. It's what? Uh oh. <laughs> right. We just, I tell you what, should we just get on and make a drink? It's yeah, cocktail time. <laughs> Let's Julie just transition with that. Out yeah. Let's do it. Well, guys, you know, when I set out to come up with the official cocktails for the Breeders' Cup, what I really wanted to do and what was very important for me was making sure that we were reflecting the rich history and traditions of this iconic racing event. So the Tory Cup itself gets its name from the Tory Horse Sculpture, a replica of which, of course, is presented to the, the winners of the Breeders' Cup each year. And the drink, just like the sculpture itself and the horses, for that matter, is regal and complex, but it's also strong and somewhat refreshing. But most importantly, it's easy to make. So we're going to do that right now, whether you're in your home following along with us. I know Nick and Brittany are going to be following along with me, and we're going to make three perfect Tory cups right now. So unfortunately, I won't be able to switch my, uh, my view again tonight, but hopefully I can describe it in a way that everybody can still follow. So Nick and Brittany, our first thing, now we've gone over this plenty of times. We're going to start with the least expensive ingredients. So we're going to start off with some lemonade. Now, the beauty of this cocktail is you can use fresh lemonade that you make in your homes, or you can use a commercial brand. The drink is still gonna taste fantastic. So we're gonna take our lemonade, and what we want is two ounces of lemonade going into our mixing tin. I'm gonna keep an eye on Nick Luck right now. So which side? Which side? Oh, so that's gonna be the larger side that you want. The larger side, if that's a standard measuring tool, you're probably, that's gonna be maybe an ounce and a half or two ounces. So I would say fill it up all the way. You should be good. That's looking good. All right. So that's our, our two parts of lemonade. <laughs> two ounces, yeah? Two ounces. You got it. Or uh, what would that be? 60 milliliters, Nick? And, and which, which pot am I putting it in? The big one or the small one? You're going to put it in the small one. That's a good question. Oh, shoot. Okay. That's okay. I mean, it works either way, but... It was a Sometimes, beautiful flourish. Yeah, when you All see right. me at the end, when I kind of do Let's we've got a lot of guests tonight. Uh -huh. Okay, let's do it. All right, guys, so we're going to do our orange juice. We are going to do an ounce and a half of orange juice. Mm -hmm. Now, keep in mind, this cocktail is only oh, four ingredients. So really right. nice and simple. Bernice getting it everywhere. I know. <laughs> That's part of the learning process. It happens to me, too, sometimes. 
So after that, we're gonna follow it with the complexity, part of the complexity of our cocktail here, which comes from sweet vermouth. I've spoken about it in the past. It's a fortified, aromatized wine that delivers all these beautiful spice and caramel notes. So we're gonna want three quarters of an ounce of sweet vermouth. So you're probably gonna flip that, that jigger over to the small side and mm -hmm. fill that up three quarters of the way. Oh, my flourish is not looking so. Flourish. It's okay, I, I'm telling you, I, I was doing the same thing when I started oh. with that. Great, got it. How's it looking, Nick? Great. <laughs> I think you have me beat on that one. <laughs> so of course, we love our makers, Mark. I have learned so many great bourbon cocktails over the course of Cocktails and Conversations. A lot of them I knew beforehand, but I've even discovered new ones while we did our 20 plus episodes. So Maker's Mark works fantastic in each and every one. We are gonna do an ounce and a half of our Maker's Mark bourbon. So you're gonna flip it back to the large side. Okay. It's gonna be pretty much all the way to the top, an ounce and a half. So it's all about balance in this cocktail, mm -hmm. only four ingredients, but- The flourish is getting better. It's getting better. With the right balance, with the right harmony, this cocktail comes together perfectly. So. Now I'm looking forward to seeing some really good shaking. Let's fill our cocktail mm -hmm. glasses, our mixing tins up with ice. All the way up. All the way up, yep. All right, now this, this is the part where we would typically read off some, some extensive uh, stats, and then my arms would start to hurt and the shaking tin would get nice and cold. But you guys are gonna feel some of that energy this time. So we'll what feel we're your doing, pain. Yeah, I tried to choose a different word. Sometimes it is a little painful. But what we want to do now, we want to take that larger tin and you want to put it on top at an angle on top of the small tin. And you want to give it a nice little hit on the top because that's going to create that vacuum seal. You really want that vacuum seal so that you don't splash it. But now when we shake, turn it upside down. You want the small side up and facing you so that if something does, if the seal does break, are you sure you don't want me to do it this way, just in case? <laughs> That's, you could do that too. All right, guys. Right. It's a joy to do this after 26 weeks. Let's shake together. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> what is that? And don't we oh have to my hit goodness. it? I can't get the thing out. Yeah, so now you, you have to hit basically at the point that the two tins come yeah. together, and okay. that's going to break the seal, and then you'll be yeah. able to take it off. I've taken Hopefully. it off, yeah. Look at that. Yeah. All right. Now, if you have more ice there, I don't know how much ice you guys have, but nice. I like to strain over fresh ice, because remember, the rule of ice is that the larger it is, the slower it melts. So we want to strain over our fresh ice to maintain mm -hmm. the integrity of this cocktail. So ideally, we'd have one of those big ice balls, wouldn't we? Yeah, although for some drinks, I mean, for like a Manhattan or an Old Fashioned, that's perfect. Um, but for a drink like this, I think it's okay for it to kind of dilute a little bit as it goes. But that's a good question. I have, I have a confession, Mark. Yeah. A, um, an Old Fashioned was ordered the other day, and it came with a bunch of ice. And it didn't look as appetizing because it didn't have the little square, the little ball of ice. I'm learning, I swear. You, are, you guys have learned so much. I've learned a lot this, this year as well. Um, let's effect. see those Tory cups. Garnish oh, with a little lemon wheel and orange. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna judge these as they come out. How does she do that, Brittany? That's looking good. Perfect yeah. color. So that's perfect color. I pull like that, right? I mean, Nick I is analyzing. No, 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 no. Which way? The other way. That way. Yep, that way. Oh, that way. <laughs> come on, <laughs> somebody's paying attention over here. <laughs> Who's on first? <laughs> that looks good too, Nick. I oh, think, I are, mean, you guys are pros. looking pretty on point. I don't I'm know. Say, I, will, will you guys have me back next year? Because you guys are getting too good here. I don't know. Yeah, I know someone, someone already suggested that Nick should learn how to bartend so he could take my place. I think that was last week or the week before. But cheers, guys. That is our Tory Cup cocktail. Cheers. The first of two official Breeders' Cup cocktails tonight. That's, uh, that is very nice. Thank That's you. Very, thank you. Nick, is that your first time trying it? Thank you very much. I haven't tried this before. It's fantastic. Cheers, awesome. Lady B. Cheers. Cheers, guys. Mm. Mm. Uh, cheers to all of you at home. Got more. We have some more little comments coming in. Mary Jane Kit McKittrick, which we've had plenty of really awesome show names, right? New, new horse name, Share Our Up. Wow. 
Sunny Boom, can we round up to the nearest ounce? <laughs> the nearest ounce. Yes, we can. <laughs> we, especially, especially with the maker's mark, we can do that. You, you got it. Mark, there's, a, there's, a, there's a question here. It, it says, Mark's been at this long enough now. You know, yeah. we, we've tried to assimilate some knowledge of cocktail making. I, you know, you can judge for yourself how well you think Ooh. we've done. But you, you by osmosis, have, have got, gathered quite a lot of horse racing yeah. knowledge. And, and one correspondent is asking, yes, Jennifer, Pinkton Cook, JPC. She says, we need to know who Mark likes in the distaff and the classic. Mark, right, I'm, I'm, I'm terribly embarrassed if I say the wrong names here, but I'm going to say for the distaff, Swiss Skydiver. Does that make sense? This is very yeah. good because we have Kenny McPeak coming on yes. later. Okay. <laughs> we also have and, and for the classic, I guess I'm going to go authentic. Kentucky Derby yeah. winner. There we go. What about you, Britt? Very good. Quick oh, distaff and classic pick. Quick distaff. Um, I'm going to go a dead heat between Monomoy Girl and Swiss Skydiver. Oh, that is the biggest cop out ever, by the way. <laughs> Brad Cox and Kenny McPeak are both on the show. Come on. Yeah. We've got to interview them all the time. You know, you don't want to piss anybody off. Uh, and in the... <laughs> In the classic, Tom Stata. <laughs> Tom Stata. Yes. Really? I think he's the forgotten horse. Second classic for Al Stoll. Mm -hmm. Ten years after the first. I think it could be. It could be a good one. Okay. I think you'll get a good price too, but uh, not a forgotten man who is joining us right now. Tom Amos, trainer of Serengeti Empress, who's running in the Philly and Mare Sprint. Welcome, in. Tom. Thank you so much for joining us. It's my pleasure, Brittany. Nick, how are you? I'm well, Tom. Great to see you. Looking forward to seeing you later in the week as well. Mm -hmm. And how are you feeling? This is going to be quite an emotional moment for you, isn't it? Bidding a, a farewell to Serengeti. Yeah, I, I was. I just drove over to Lexington this evening, and uh, I was by myself and had a little quiet time. I thought a lot about it, and uh, mm -hmm. thought a lot about what she's meant to me. And um, you know, irregardless of how she runs Saturday, and, and just to put it on the record, I think she's going to run great. But mm -hmm. uh, irregardless of how she runs, you know, this is her last start before she goes on to be a mama. And, you know, she's been such a big part of the stable and, and, and so important to me and to our team that uh, it's going to be a difficult day, uh, no matter what the outcome is. Do you begin to reflect on all of her performances as you get closer to the day of her final race? And what, what memories are you flooded with with her? So a couple. Uh, I think uh, the one that stands out is that Joe Politi, the owner, and myself, we constantly uh, call her the gift that keeps on giving because mm -hmm. there's so many things have come our way thanks to her. But, um, you know, the day she won the Kentucky Oaks was an interesting day. Uh, a lot of things happened on that specific day. Most importantly was, uh, uh, was that Joel Politi, the owner, had just come home from vacation in Costa Rica. This was a really nice concierge-type vacation, and he met uh, on that vacation uh, – uh, some interesting people mm -hmm. and um, those people actually came to the Derby and I'll let you guess with a hint who that person was. He's the wealthiest man in the entire world and he happens to run a little company called Amazon. No way. Wow. Yes. Really? So they came to the Oaks that day and they don't know anything about racing. He and his brother Mark came. Jeff Bezos and Mark Bezos came to the Oaks that day and Joel had a private suite which was given to each of the participants in the Kentucky Oaks. It was outdoors, so although very well done by Churchill Downs, you could see from one suite to the next. The biggest name in those suites that day was Bill Belichick. And Bill Belichick is the coach of the Patriots, mm -hmm. and everybody wanted to meet him. When Jeff Bezos showed up in the suite area, incognito, I might add, uh, it took about 10 minutes for the suite area to realize Jeff Bezos was in the house. And they flooded him for pictures and wanted to say hello. And, you know, by that time, Bill Belichick, he might as well, he was all by himself. He looked like he was somebody's stepchild. Nobody wanted to talk to him. But anyhow, <laughs> those guys, those guys. They said Bill who? They know nothing about racing, but they knew to bet on Serengeti Empress. And so, as you guys know, for the Oaks, it's about 45 minutes between races by that time mm -hmm. at Churchill Downs. It takes a long time. Mm -hmm. If you're doing TV, I'm, I, I don't even want to know how you're filling it in. But So we're in the paddock quite a while, and Serengeti Empress is 27 to 1 going into the Oaks. When we left the paddock, she's 17 to 1. So she's dropped 10 points on a big day of racing with a lot of betting, and I'm thinking to myself, this Jeff Bezos guy, he got me. And when she went to the gate, I remember looking at the board as she went in, 
and she was 13 to one. She dropped yeah. that much in the odds. Wow. We know the rest. She won. Uh -huh. And uh, I didn't think about Jeff Bezos again until the next morning. And uh, that morning <laughs> I, uh, I called my owner. I was like, hey, did you ever speak to Jeff and Mark Bezos about the race? And he goes, oh, yeah. I said, did they bet? He goes, oh, they sure did. I said, well, Joel, send me, you know, what they bet? He goes, oh, I got a picture. I'm going to send it to you. So when I got the phone, I waited for the picture to come over my text, and I thought it would be stacks and stacks of money. But each of them just had their hand, and the money was in a fan, and they each bet $100 to win. That's all they bet. And my disappointment, you know, was, was strong enough that I called Joel back, and he answered the phone laughing. I said, they only bet $100 each. And his response to me is what horse racing is all about. He said, Tom – you would have thought they had robbed a bank. They were so excited. So in horse racing, it's about being right, making mm -hmm. the right bet and being right. It's not about how much you bet. So uh, I think that's uh, something I always knew, but I learned I learned it again that day. That's such a great story. It's a, if it's a two dollar win wager, a hundred dollar win wager, or you're making thousands of dollars, it is the matter that you're you're right. You're coming home and you have something to cheer for. Um, we don't want to keep take you for too long, Tom. I know you've got a very busy week, um, but you were mentioning the owner, Joel, and he had said that they're not going to sell Serengeti Empress because she's a part of the family, so they're keeping her. Can you just tell us what this might mean to them and the entire family in her final race? Well, it's a, it's a conversation I knew I had to have with him. And, uh, you know, I've, I've trained for some big owners uh, along the way, and they've had horses that were very good race horses, but weren't really regally bred. And they didn't go on to be great mare, great race mares. And Serengeti Empress, if she were to be sold after the Breeders' Cup, she would, no matter how she runs, she'd be somewhere in the $3 million range would be a guess. Mm -hmm. If she wins on Saturday, it'd be more than that. And so... Uh, uh, earlier this summer, I texted Joel. I said, hey, I need to have a conversation with you. Uh, I said, I'm not really comfortable with it, but can you give me a call? So <laughs> I probably should give him a few more clues because he got a little worried. But when he called, I said, listen, I'm only going to say this one time. You know, your, your mare is worth a lot of money after the Breeders' Cup. And uh, not all mares go on to be great brood mares. You know, you ought to consider selling her. And uh, he said – the perfect line. He said, Tom, if she never has a good baby, but 10 years from now I can go out in the field and pet her, then that's all I need. So I never had to bring it up after that, which was good because uh, I didn't want him to sell her. Uh, you know, that would, be really, that would be really difficult. So he's a great owner. He loves horse racing. He knows horse racing. And uh, his appreciation and love for this filly is just like mine. You know, it's not parallel to anything I can put into words, really. Uh, but for people that know horses and, and love horses, they know what I'm talking about. Sometimes in this game, Tom, the stars just align. Often enough, things just go awry. But sometimes the stars just align perfectly. And I think everybody who's who's calling in tonight and is commenting on, on what they've just heard mm -hmm. is going to be rooting for you now and for this filly and for your owner. And I hope the story has many more chapters. Thanks so much for chatting to us again. And we look forward to seeing you Friday and Saturday. Thanks, Tom. Good luck. Yeah, not only my pleasure, my honor to be with you guys. I've enjoyed the shows throughout the year. Uh, I think you bring a great service and real enjoyment, especially in a time where a lot of us have to sit at home. Uh, so thank you very much for having me. Tom, cheers. cheers. Your good health. <laughs> good night. Take care. Tom Amos. And that's a, I, now we wanted to win, don't we? Yeah. But that's what the game's all about. Exactly. It is. And you could just hear it in his voice and then the stories that he shared, um, also about him and the owner, mm. how much she means to them. She is not just a racehorse. She is part of the family. She's given them so many thrills. But even the races that she hasn't won, he said having her there in the barn just means the world to them. That's why you get in the game. Those that don't know it, that's why. Yeah, and I think she she embodies the, the you know the courage of all the people around her as well because yeah, she's an incredibly tough filly. She wears a heart on her sleeve. We know that, and we often ascribe human characteristics to horses, and sometimes probably wrongly. But uh, Tom, you know, went through quite a lot himself last year. Mm -hmm. The filly did. They were brave to run her in the Kentucky Oaks after what had happened to her the time before. They were taking a bit of flack for it. Mm -hmm. It came off gloriously, you know. And he, and not only that, he came out. I, I did the interview for NBC before the Oaks. Mm -hmm. And he came out right on the front foot and said, I've got her ripe, ready, and she's going to run huge. 
and, and actually did. Fair play. So. I'm wondering though, if they only bet a hundred dollars each, who was the one that dropped it from twenty-seven to one to sixteen to one? What, <laughs> what, what, what struck me about that is a the he, none of us knew Bezos was there, uh -huh. um, and secondly, if can you imagine if all the trainers knew that Bezos was there, they'd have been f like flies round oh, a dung heap. Big they? time. I mean, can you imagine? <laughs> If they I mean, can you imagine all those trainers around. Oh, that comparison? <laughs> but hey, along with the love for the horses, this is what makes the sport so much fun. And when we talk about how sports betting has gone really big across the nation and around the world, but with horse racing, you get two minutes, mm. two minutes at most, and you can find out whether or not you've won. Yeah. So for all of our viewers, we're really testing their knowledge, right, on whether or not mm. they can wager on these races mm. and win. How do you wager? How do I wager? Yeah. Well, I walk up to the window with a large wadge of cash or sometimes a small wadge of cash and uh, ask the person behind the window for however much money on well, whatever well, horse. That's if you're allowed to come to the track. Unfortunately, a lot of our people watching right now are not allowed to come to the track. So I got the next question. Hang on. Is this your very, very long segue into a sponsored element? Because if it is, can you get on with it? Well, yeah, it I was trying beautiful. to make it less like I, I, I thought was, it was fantastic. You guys, this was a seamless transition. It was just a conversation, and then he has to do that. Okay, okay, this is a plug here. I mean, here. it was getting turgid there. It's a plug here for a company I work for. No, you can watch and wager all of this racing on TVG, tvg.com, but for all of our new, you know, new betters out there, you can get a 50% deposit match. So go to tvg.com, wager on these incredible races. They're very competitive. 50% match on your first deposit up to $250. And hey, I recognize that horse right there. I think that champagne room. It is, big girl. Yeah, she is mm. a big girl. Uh, <laughs> tell me about the FanDuel contest. Well, we have a... We, <laughs> we, we, we have a ton of action to look forward to this weekend. So why not a little bit more? If you can select the exact order of finish in the FanDuel Breeders' Cup mile, you could win a million dollars. A million dollars! Wow! Uh, <laughs> you can tell I hadn't read that before. <laughs> can you? Mix, well, mix, mix voice just dollars. reached like a high, high soprano, I think. <laughs> a million dollars! If, <laughs> if you're new to TVG, sign up today to get a. Oh no, that was the previous one. Sorry. Check out the free play contest at breederscup.com forward slash FanDuel and take a shot. How often have you had to do sponsored elements? <laughs> Quite a lot. <laughs> Did they all go like that? Yeah, they're all brilliant. I particularly like them once where I have to promote big bass fishing. Or I whatever. mean, that was that was yeah. really fantastic. We've got a few more to come. Or I ninja, think you should let turtle warrior. I think we should let you handle all of them. <laughs> yeah, okay, good. <laughs> Breederscup.com forward slash FanDuel. There we go. Mark, save us from this insanity, please. <laughs> <laughs> what, what cocktail will we be making in a short time? We're uh, just waiting on Brad Cox to join us. Wesley Ward will be joining us in a bit, but uh, give the fans yeah. what they want to hear. What cocktail is next? We're going to be making the Garland. And the Garland cocktail, I mean, this is the one that you could sip on probably all day at the races because it's delicate. The whole point of that cocktail was to bring to life the, the beautiful imagery of the garland that's draped over the winning horses. So this drink, I mean, we've got honey green tea. We've got triple sec vodka lemon juice so literally you could sip this throughout the day at the races it's not going to knock you over it's just going to keep you nice and refreshed so yeah you guys let me know when you guys want to dive into it we're going to i know the fans are looking forward to it i'm looking forward to it too i this, vote i vote we dive into it right now right hang on this this right is, oh uh, the, delicious is that's the tory cup yeah it's, <laughs> it's, it's because it's, it's stronger it's, than it feels right well it's so easy to drink do you yeah. feel like it's knocking you off your feet because there's a table you could just lean on if need be all right Okay, but he's trying to edge him. Nick out after that last uh, promo plug. <laughs> but it, it, yeah, it's very, very good. Exactly. I'm, Save us from promo like plug. All right. So let's go ahead and make the garland now, and then we're going to get to our lineup of amazing guests after that. So, and you guys are not going to be making this one with me, right? You had the stuff for the Tory Cup. So I'm just going to describe this. So, again, the garland, the whole point of this cocktail is refreshing, slightly floral, not too sweet. So, Everything about that beautiful arrangement of flowers that we associate with the Breeders' Cup, with the Breeders' Cup colors. We've got beauty asters, golden asters, cremants, Catalaya orchids. So all of that gorgeous imagery is what we wanted to bring into this cocktail. So a little bit of background uh, information. At one point in the development of this drink, the drink was actually purple, just like the Breeders' Cup uh, colors itself. But eventually, to kind of streamline things, we brought it down to this beautiful kind of a, a pale sort of yellow or green with a nice purple garnish. So you're going to see that in just like a second. Mm. Yep. Let's let's dive into this. We are going to do 
start again with our kind of juices. So we're going to start with a half ounce of fresh lemon juice. This is going to be that acidity to balance out some of the sweeter elements. And I know I've said it so many times, but when it comes to citrus juices, fresh is best. It's a simple thing, but it's going to make your cocktails that much better. All right. I'm just practicing my flourish. That's good. <laughs> And now we're going to move on to our honey green tea. So I know this sounds maybe a little complicated, but there are some great brands out there that make it very easy on you. Uh, Pure Leaf makes a variety of honey green tea as well as Honest Tea. So you can find most of those in your local grocery store. I've even seen them at a Staples one time. So you have a lot of options to get those ingredients. And again, that's the point of these cocktails. They're accessible. They're easy to make. They're something that you can participate in yourselves. So we are going to do... Now we did half ounce of the lemon juice. We're gonna do one ounce of our honey green tea. And you're gonna see that the proportions on this cocktail are very, very easy. Essentially what we're doing is a half part of the lemon juice and then one part of everything else. So very, very simple, easy to remember. We're gonna move on to our triple sec. Triple sec is that fantastic orange liqueur. We know it in sidecars and margaritas. It provides that beautiful kind of subtle orange citrus background and Cointreau is a fantastic high-end brand. So this is going to take our cocktail to the next level, but any type of triple sec will work well in this cocktail. So again, we're going to do one ounce, keeping that easy ratio going, half part lemon to one part everything else. And finally, picture of this. yeah, Dor Dorian, Dorian Dickinson says, Britt, you're coming from behind. With my flourish. <laughs> and that you may ever yeah. take me to the finish line. Yep. <laughs> But you like know, that's, a, that, that's a great point as well. To, that these cocktails can be made in pitchers. They're easy to batch. They're easy to scale upwards. So like any other race day drink, they have to be scalable for thousands of people. Although right now we're doing it for small groups in our homes. But Perfect. very easy to prep ahead of time. You can do it for your friends and your family while you're watching the Breeders' Cup this weekend. So finally, our Tito's Handmade Vodka. The most important part. The most important part. We have seen so many great vodka recipes throughout this show. Um, some great variations on classics, maybe that originally had gin, but we saw how the vodka works perfectly in there, especially with a great quality vodka like Tito's. So one ounce of Tito's going in, just like the Tory cup. This is a four ingredient cocktail, so easy to remember. The ingredients are easy to get, and we're gonna give this a good shake. I'm gonna miss not shaking it with you guys this time because you did a fantastic job. Well, should we just shake along just to make you feel better? I think that you should name <laughs> all of the starters that Wesley Ward has because it's quite a few of this Breeders Cup. It is. <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> all shake right, away. All right, we're going to welcome him in very shortly, Mark. Let's shake him. Let's shake him. Because he's still after the fight. The man's Indian fuller into the sunrise. Golden Cow, Gypsy King, Craig will bring the booze out of door. Campanelli. And next, here he is. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Wesley Ward. <laughs> <laughs> there he what is. What an entrance. Hey, Wesley. Oh, oh, look oh. at that. What do, what, do, what do you got tonight, Wes? That looks like a deep red. That's it. Cabernet? <laughs> That's it. We're getting serious Let me see. Tonight. Northern California, or do you go, you know, uh, overseas? Where do you get your cabs? We get it from uh, Napa. Oh, yeah. Napa. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That, that is wine haven. All right, Mark, how, how delicious is that drink looking? It is looking fantastic. It's about to look a little bit better because we're going to give it a special Breeders' Cup garnish. Let's see if you can see it. I know I don't have my other view. A nice purple look orchid. Beautiful. Look, at that is right. stunning. A beautiful, refreshing cocktail. Again, you can have a few of these on race day. It's not going to knock you out. Just going to keep you nice and cool while you're watching the fantastic races. So cheers, guys. That's our second cocktail, the Garland. Cheers. Mark, thank you very much. Uh, Wesley, welcome. A home game again. A home game for you here mm -hmm. at Keeneland. How does it feel to have Breeders' Cup back home? Oh, we got the bottle. Are you going to show it off? Hang on, guys. Oh, look at that. Hang on. What do we got? There you. Oh, wow. You, you play big. You play very big. <laughs> no messing around. <laughs> what did you think he was going to produce? Uh, uh, you, you know, I expected that, to be honest. Okay. <laughs> Okay, back back to your question. Sorry, home game. Home game, yeah. How does that feel? Great. We're here. We got the home court advantage. You'd hope, anyways. But we're we're all excited. Hey, the funny thing that struck me. Uh, we were just chatting about this at lunch today. The beginning of the year, you were saying you had some nice two-year-olds, mm -hmm. and we were thinking, well, are they quite as nice as he said? Has he really got? And suddenly, 
you bowl up in a, in a Breeders' Cup race, and I think you had 11 pre-entries in that, in that juvenile turf sprint, which must be some kind of a record. Is it something to do with just the way the season's been and the, the weird year that we've had that they've kind of slightly come on us a little bit late? Uh, no, I just think that, um, you know, they, I've got a lot of turf sprinters and, um, there's very, there's very few turf, uh, sprint stakes and mine were, you know, kind of ready to go and, um, they all ended up sound and, and we're here. And so we put them in and we were hoping we could get some in and we did. At the beginning of the year, compared to now, did the horse, the two-year-old, that you thought was going to be the best at the time or excel or the most precocious, has that changed or has it stayed the same? Stayed the same. It's, uh, and, golden and who? Pal, so. Golden Pal. Yeah, yeah. He, he, was, okay. he was my favorite from January, you know, so here we are today. I mean, that's such a special horse being out of Lady Shipman, who ran second here in the turf sprint back in 2015. Um, Nick's fault for giving you post 14. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> he was the one calling the turf races, my so bad. it's not my fault. <laughs> well, that, that, you know how they used to have the derby and the trainer got to go up and pick his post? Mm -hmm. That yep. would have been my pick. I would have picked 14. Wow. So you know really? me No way. Why? Uh, always. When I have. Um, horse with with sincere quality um like him and has speed and it's a sprint i want to be on the outside this way if for some reason they break a step slow or um whatever happens they don't get jostled or whatever happens there's no outside pressure either you know so mm -hmm. I, that that would be my pick anytime i have speed i want to be on the outside in a sprint well, there you go okay so what in in a perfect world then because it's, you know, it's only five and a half furlongs to sort yourself out. In a perfect world, from that gate, how do you envisage the race going? Well, you know, the, the, it, it's an ideal post for Irad. It's not like he's a send rider. He's kind of a sit still rider. Um, when he first started riding for me, and a lot of, a lot of riders do the same, um, he would send them out of there because that's what he thought I wanted. And I went, I had to talk to him. I said, look, Irad, I want you to ride your race. My horses are going to be fast out of there anyways. I said, so if you send them, they're even going to be, you know, you're going to, you're going to take away from them at the finish. And so he's really learned how to ride my horses the way I train them to where he kind of lets them float out of there. And then, you know, he may take a hold and take back a little bit and not just in this race, but, it, but in any race that he rides for, he's just, he rides beautiful, beautiful races for me that he knows where I'm at and then he can ride the race accordingly. Um, I had a lot of luck with him. He's rode some great races. You know, he's on a roll right now. He's like a golfer or a basketball player or a football player that's on a roll. So I'm, I'm real happy to have him as, as well as everybody else is on the day or on the weekend. Now, Wesley, we're only a couple of days away from the Breeders' Cup. For you, what is this week like? Are you able to enjoy it? Are you able to relax since you're, most of your work is done aside from putting the saddle on him? What is it like for you in lead up? You know, when I go to Ascot, um, I have there, there's a lot of pressure as we get closer to the race. Now that we're here at home, um, I have so many other things going on outside of, uh, uh, you know, with, with horses, but not with, with racing. I got farms and broodmares and yearlings, and it's all right here. So it, it's, it's able to, I'm able to keep, take, you know, not have to worry or stress out about it, you know. So it's, uh, it's, it's been a little, it's been good in one sense that I have all these other things happening to where I can just focus in the, you know, in the evening and, and getting their schedules in order. And then in the mornings and carrying out their training. And then all afternoon from then on, I'm just, you know, I'm either on the tractor or going through this or that, or, you know, we're building fences and where do we got, all, we got a million things going on right here at Keeneland or just right outside of Keeneland, the back gate of Keeneland. I think it's probably good to stay busy. Right? It's uh, got to be good to stay busy. And uh, it's just such a, uh, this week, is, it couldn't have panned out more, more beautifully from a, from a conditions point of view. It's mm -hmm. dry. It's warm. No, he, want, the he, track's he wanted gonna rain. Be, well, I did, I did want rain. Um, just because, it, as I said, selfishly, uh, and I'm sure there's a lot of horses going in that, that need firm ground and mine would, would be okay in the soft turf. Um, but you know, they're, they're going to run very, very well in, in a firm ground as well. Um, it's just, it just, it takes away my advantage a little bit to horses that don't like it. Cause I know mine mm -hmm. do, um, but they're going to, they're going to run fantastic. And Keeneland's a course that, um, it's going to hold the moisture. It's going to hold the water in there. It's not going to be as firm as you would think uh, on mm -hmm. Friday. So it's not. It's not. It's not like California. Firm. No, it's, 
it's no. just got a, a nice enough cushion. Yeah, and, and this course at Keeneland, um, for years and years and years, and it goes back to Rogers Beasley. Um, I went to him, and I uh, once we I started going there and had a little success. And I said, and we were having to ship to other uh, tracks, like Arlington opened it up first for me to where uh, my winners at Keeneland, I took them to Arlington. And I worked them on the grass over there. Uh, Chris Bowles and, and all of the management over there would really, really uh, kind of help me out to for me to breeze them on the grass um, there. And then one, the first year we actually went to River Downs, uh, they opened up the turf for me there. And when I went to Rogers and I said, look, Rogers, I know your meat's over, but can you please do me a huge favor instead of me shipping to all these different places? Can can I just try these two year olds that I'm going to take over to Ascot and I'm going to, and instead of having to ship, you know, hundreds of miles, can I do it right here at Keeneland? And what I found is the two year olds that like the turf down in Florida, which is a real mm -hmm. hard firm turf course. And it looked like they liked it when I breezed them at Keeneland, you know, I breeze them. One would just outwork the other by three or four lengths, which I thought going into the work, they'd be equal uh it's it's a course that really favors the europeans coming over mm -hmm. um it's a sand-based course and i've had a lot of horses that have run at keeneland i'm based here um and that would win graded stakes at santa anita shrinking violet being one um she won a, a couple couple of big races in california and every time she ran here she didn't run any good she just she couldn't get a hold of that course there's it's a funny course here mm -hmm. mm. Uh, Wesley, I want to I want to talk about Campanelle. Yeah. Because I, I had wanted a, to talk about Frankie. Here uh, we go. Well, I want to talk about Frankie a little bit because I, I spoke with him today. He was going to come on, but he said he he's just a bit tired. He wants to get his 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 rest, and he's got to get up early tomorrow morning. He he feels that Campanelle is his best chance of a uh, of a winner, and she does look a bit of a superstar. Mm -hmm. How is she training? She's training really good. She's um. She's just so relaxed and so easygoing, and, and Julio, who works her uh, every week, he can just get her just to melt in the morning and just kind of switch it completely off to where they're just, you know, I put her in front um, uh, of the out of door and a few of the works, and, and she's just out there, and she's just kind of pricking her ears, going around there, just like in a gallop. And Julio, he stays kind of motionless. motionless. He's, he's like a little ant on her because uh, she's getting real big now, this filly. And um, when, you know, I, I'm watching the work, and she's just so relaxed out there. And I get off and I said, Julio, I said, what do you think? He said, oh, let's see. So I got off. He said, well, I just moved my pinky. He said, she'd be gone. So I, it's always good to hear him have that insight because he, he knows more than anybody, as he did with Lady Aurelia and all my other horses. I love it. You have a very busy day on Friday. Hopefully you can be celebrating afterwards and celebrating all day Saturday. Uh, Wesley, thanks for the time. You took us to the barn last time you were on the show with us, which was truly amazing. Now those horses are coming straight out from the barn onto the track here for the Breeders' Cup. So, hey, good luck with all of your runners. Too many to name here. Well, well I'm glad we uh, we had this a little later than the last time because the last time we started a little early and, and you got me drunk, Brittany. So <laughs> he said that to me and was, I said, yeah, you're uh, welcome. Uh, obviously it was all our fault, you know? That's it. Uh, Cause you know. Oh, are they on uh, yet? Are you speaking of which, look who it is. Don't let Wesley, 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 get back on. Uh, you, got, you got a better name on the other line. I know, I like it. Hey. We did this at Sarah's. So, so here's my yeah. gang tonight. Woo-hoo! <laughs> <laughs> some candy in the house. Hey, Wesley. Hey, Wesley. Can you see everybody? Oh, we can. <laughs> How, how yeah, so um, so Wesley's, I'm going to tell you what kind of great guy he is. I can't remember, I want a race or he won a race, but we ran into him at Jack Fry's in Louisville. This is my wife, Sherry, right here. Best decision I ever made. And uh, he sends over the best bottle of wine that they got. Yeah, Wesley was so nice. And I owe him one, actually. I owe him one. <laughs> so, yeah, I know you. I know you like good reds. I know you like good reds. <laughs> Good luck this weekend, bro. You too, buddy. Yeah, it'll be a lot of fun. Here's Bing Bush. He's got a couple of um, smoking, smoking old fashions. Yeah, old fashions. Have you made one of those? Yeah, it wasn't old fashions. Christian Erickson, his wife, Florian. As you can tell, they're really stressed. They're really worried. This is how you stress. 
Yeah. yeah, you know, I still, I still have to be keen when they're early in the morning, but all the hard work's done, you know. Um, and Wesley probably tell you this. What's the, all the workouts are over, and you know, you know, you're just trying to get them up to the race and make sure everybody's eating good. And so much rocket science from here, and um, we um, we're very fortunate to be in these kind of races. So um, you know, we're going to take advantage of that, and hopefully, everything goes good. Very good. Yeah, you got to find that happy balance. Trainers work 24 7, so you have to enjoy yourself. You also have to, you know, it, it's, a, it's a tough balance. I know it. Do it with my dad. This was completely unplanned. It was actually supposed to be my wife and I having a nice tight dinner away from my crazy four year old, which we love to death. But a few hours away from is always good. No, and then like Christian the called because he was no, picking up Bing at the airport in Louisville. So, so here we all sit and, um, you know, never one to say no to good friends showing up. So it's all good. Henny, Henny I want to hang out with you. You're, you're in the right place there, buddy. <laughs> well, yeah. well, Wesley, it's going to be a great week. We'll get that bottle of wine from you. Right, it's Wesley? That's it. Well, yeah. I, I'll tell you one thing. Like, Kenny and I, I've talked to you about this before. I think it was River Down, somewhere where we got started. But uh, I was in Yakima Meadows. And this evening, I, uh, my buddy came into town. He's, he's uh, my feed man, Devin Owen from California. And I remember I used to have to duck the feed man when he would come around at the end of the month. So we're, that was pressure. That, we're not, we don't have any pressure now. That was pressure ducking the feed man. <laughs> exactly. Somebody asked me what pressure was. I said that's 15 bad horses in the dead of winter at Turfway Park and an owner that won't pay you. <laughs> okay. I've been there. Anyway. I love it. Well, hey, Wesley, we'll let you go. Thanks for joining us. Good luck on Friday with all your runners. Good luck, Wesley. Wesley, I'm carrying a good bottle of down in the morning for you. Oh, good, good bottle of wine coming to Wesley in the yeah. morning. Well, Here's another, another nice bottle of wine coming to Wesley. Uh, Kenny, you, you're, for, for a man with a big, with a big weekend, as you, you said, it, you know, you, there's nothing you can do now, but you, you, you do look as if you're relishing it. You're enjoying having, having these great horses rather than being cowed by the pressure of it. Yeah. No, I always have. I mean, that's a true story. I, I did. I had 15 bad horses in the dead of winter Turfway and a guy that wouldn't pay me. I mean, it, it was, um, you know, that you, you find those stages of your career you've got to um you know you you appreciate that not necessarily worry about it anybody that doesn't doesn't take this as a um a huge positive um doesn't get it because it really is it's um the breeders cup's an amazing event um, you know, look, I'm, I think I'm over 30 in the Breeders' Cup, but I've run well almost every time. And um, even, even running second and third is almost like a winner. So, um, you know, we're going to take it in stride. We're here at home. Um, we love coming to California. However, it is nice being home other than it's a little chilly around here. My, my gang here is having really way too much fun. <laughs> No, just as much fun as they should be having Breeders' Cup week. Being Bunch, has got horologist in the disc gap. How do you guys feel about going up against each other? Oh, they, they're asking me about horologist. Um, how do you feel about going up against each other? Yeah, you know, I feel really good if you were in the dang race. I've had everything. He <laughs> tried to talk like me out of running. <laughs> yeah, you could have gone to class and get everything you've been for many, many years. We both went to the University of Kentucky around the same time. But he's a hell of a lot older than me. Just, just look at him. Just look at him. <laughs> Okay. Oh, this is brilliant. <laughs> and this is what I love that you see racing brings so many people together, and you think, oh, okay, you're competitors in this industry. Hey, at the end of the day, you're kind of family. You spend so much time with each other in the mornings, in the afternoons. You're family, and that's what you're seeing right here. Yeah, there's no question. Um, actually, well, there, there's both sides of it. I mean, there are those of us that that um, don't get along. But for the most part, I'm going to tell you a large percentage of us, um, we, have, we have a good time. They realize that, that the, on the playing field is one thing. And I'm sure there's ball players that are the same way. And, but, um, but I know that racing, it really, it's up to the horses and the jockeys. And can you imagine the jockeys are all in the room together every day? If they can't get along, why can't trainers and owners? So um, this is easy side of it.
I'll the only that. that you have yeah. with Duffy's all in the same room. Uh, you said getting on. So this skydiver clearly is getting on. <laughs> Somebody made a funny comment that she was at home eating everyone's food. You talk about what a great eater she is. How do you feel she's thriving coming into this stuff? You know, she's been steady as it goes. Um, she's had a really um, uncomplicated routine. I'm, I'm going to look, she's not hard to train. You don't overcomplicate it. You make her routine simple and basic. Um, she she goes out at a certain time of day. She gets her hose. She she um, likes to gallop at a certain pace. She works on a Saturday. Um, she's just really, really uncomplicated. I'm not going to take a huge amount of credit here other than she's made my job easier. And, you know, look, good horses do that. And we work hard at sales trying to find good horses. But she's, she's exceptional. Um, Kenny, just that matchup is one of the great things selling matchups of Breeders' Cup. Swiss Skydiver against Monomoy Girl. You've got the clash of the ages. You've got a filly who's come back from injury and, and looks as good as ever. You've got one who wears a heart on her sleeve. And the other one, you're never quite sure what she's got under the tank. How much are you, are you really relishing that, that battle? And how do you think it's going to play out through the last couple of furlongs? I've only put zero energy into it, to be honest. Um, you know, we've got to get our filly so she's right and ready. She's right and ready. Um, you line them up, um, you know, more more girls, obviously, great filly. But um, I, I just want Robbie to get in nice rhythm with her and make her run. And, and um, if the other filly comes and looks her in the eye, I'm pretty confident that she'll hold her up. Like she would like. We we talked a lot after the uh, after the preakness about which way you were going to go. What was it that finally swayed you toward the disc off rather than going to the classic? Going to deny. You know how much time and energy we put into looking at the classic. About one minute. Um, you know, Peter and I pretty much had thought, okay, let's go ahead and do the cross in her because she paid her way. And um, I think she's the only horse that's ever had a win in your end in both races. I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think any horse has ever had a win in your end in both races. So um, we took advantage of that, and we got we got a, a quick peek at them. But really, I um, kind of knew that the, that the dish staff was really where she belongs. She's a three-year-old filly. It's not like, you know, she's got a proven track record against olders, and there wasn't any reason in the world to really go into that deep water other than let's, um, let's take a look at it, see what it looks like, and... Then um, the obvious choice was really to this staff, and she needs to jump through the older filly and mare hoop at this point, and um, and let's see let's see what she does, and maybe next year you see her in the class. Well, we're making a big deal of it. We're really excited for the matches of them too. But to all of her success, cheers, best of luck on Friday and Saturday, and hey, enjoy yourself. Give us a, a, a big uh, show of the group, and best of luck to everybody there. Hey, hey, gang. Hey, Nick Rock like says he's buying dinner tonight. He said he said we everything. So go ahead, order up, order up, whatever you want, and, and I'll take you at the time two in the morning. Thanks, oh, thanks, Nick. Thanks, Nick. <laughs> Cheers, Kenny. Cheers. Good um, man. Right. Oh, man. You got you got to head on over there to pay their debt. Yeah, I, I hope you brought your credit card. I think it might That's be a fine. Steep. That's fine. <laughs> our, our good friends from the cocktails and conversation uh, production team. Uh, uh, they're covering it. They're covering right. it. So that's yeah. We've, we've, got, we've got we've got big budget now. Yeah. You know, it's not just <laughs> look at I'm the gonna, setup. Come we're we're going to call Nick Pass the Buck Luck. <laughs> it's, not just a couple of, it's not just a couple of lonely guys with their laptops in their uh, in their back rooms. It's uh, it's a whole big it's a whole big budget production now, isn't it, Mark Tuberty? <laughs> it is. And I said at the beginning, you guys look fantastic there. I don't know how big budget this is, but you guys look great. This has hey, been an got, amazing you got, show already. You got candles and a purple orchid. That's and well, actually, grand the, the orchid is from Whole Foods, so I guess that does constitute big budget. <laughs> yeah. Whole Foods is expensive. You're not going to eat it, are you? <laughs> no, no, no. See, so my wife, Jasmine, who I always speak about, she wanted me to oh, get... Oh, your some, wife, Jasmine, of wife, course. Jasmine, I know. She does exist. I mean, she wanted so me to pick up. She wanted me to pick up some white orchids as well, and I kind of <laughs> I blew my budget on purple orchids. But I said they got to take priority for Breeders' Cup weekend. So I'm going to go yeah. back to Whole Foods this weekend and get a slew of white orchids for my wife. Oh, but it's the but, appropriate, yeah, the purple color. It's great Absolutely. to have so many people with us this evening. Mm -hmm. um, I hope you enjoyed that.
can um, you tell us between now and uh, nine o'clock, which is nine o'clock Eastern, mm -hmm. when we uh, close this show, mm -hmm. right on point. Um, How many more sponsored elements I have? Well, not because you, you're about to read one. <laughs> yeah. But um, what your <laughs> best bet is for Breeders' Cup, it can be as outlandish as you like. The more outlandish, the better. But you have to show you're working a little bit, just a line or two, OK? Mm -hmm. uh, your best bet for the Breeders' Cup, just He's talking just to you, fans, not me. I'm, I'm talking to you, Michelle Latas, Fizniewski, Robert mm -hmm. Segura, Jennifer Pinkerton, Cook, Katie the two tank engine 105 extras. I mean, what's that all about? Stephanie Reinheimer, Quilicini, <laughs> Trisha Hill, you know, all of you, all of you out there, Dorian Dickinson, mm -hmm. all, all the gang. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. What are we doing next? Daily merch giveaway. It's a daily merch giveaway. Oh, yeah. How about oh, yeah. that? What, are you, what, am I, what am I getting? So, you want to know the best part of Breeders' Cup? Yeah. <laughs> Everyone loves swag, right? Yeah. How about like a swag grab? They're giving away five items every day through Championship Saturday. So, only mm. a few more days to get involved. Mm. And guess what you're going to hashtag? This is a theme, you guys. My Breeders' Cup. Hashtag My Breeders' mm -hmm. Cup. Play the That's My cool. Breeders' Cup scratch off. Mm. Didn't you love this? Did you ever go to the gas station? Scratch card, yeah. Do they do this in England? They do, scratch cards. Oh, yeah, my good. mom loves a scratch uh, card. To see if you are a lucky winner, go to www.breederscup.com like do you like slash a, scratch off. Do you like a scratch card? Uh, no. No, I never win. I, I, I no, love I them because of that little moment of hope that you get in the one minute before you actually scratch everything off. Like it's this little glimmer. It, it never really pans out, but <laughs> fills your day with that little bit of hope. Mm. There you go, a little yeah. bit of hope. <laughs> little bit that's of, what we all need. And that's what we tried to give you when we started this show mm -hmm. back in April. Stephanie says, Alexandra, I saw her this morning. She doesn't look like a sprinter, does she? But she's, uh, she's a fine, she's a fine filly. She, I mean, this is what I love about deep closers. It's just that thrilling finish. Are they gonna get there? Are they gonna get up in time? And she tends to. Her Jiper win last out was one of the most invigorating adrenaline rush performances I've seen in some time, but we haven't seen her since. Nope. So can she produce that again against the Euros? I think she's got a shot. We shall see. She has a flourish of a turn of foot. <laughs> you see uh, what I did there? Suzanne <laughs> said, I've got my Breeders' Cup party pack today. Uh, Dorian says, we're in. Uh, the name of E2 tank engine, a steam engine, Nick. Yes, okay. Um, Mary Jane wants a Molomoy girl to go out a winner. Uh, her heart belongs to Tis the Law in the Breeders' Cup I have a Classic. question. I have a question for you. Go on. Monomoy girl. Yeah. Uh, she is in the sale mm -hmm. coming up the day after the Breeders' Cup. But there has been some talk of whether or not she will actually be sold. What's your gut instinct? If she wins, does she sell? Um, yes, I would have thought so because the temptation will surely be too great. I mean, what are you talking for her? Start at what, five, six million dollars and keep going north? Midnight Beezy's being sold as well, isn't she? she How is. much do you think she's gonna make? I, I'm thinking eight. Eight? Yeah, six to eight. It's a lot of shoes, isn't it? <laughs> it's quite a bit of shoes for Midnight Beezy. <laughs> Ears up. Okay. <laughs> right? Um, Stephanie says, mean Mary will shock the world, the Dynaformer will come out. But that's the thing, you see. That's why I think the Dynaformer coming out was why, uh, the, you know, I presume you mean her kind of ability to gallop strong, um, was why Graham was half thinking about running her in the turf. Uh, and I, I can see his dilemma. I just feel that maybe a mile and uh, three sixteenths may be a tiny bit on the sharp side for me, Mary. But, but then again, she could get out on the lead and do an intercontinental and stack them up. It's an interesting race because of the distance. It is. We were talking about this earlier, rushing fall. I am such a fan of And we did try to get Chad Brown on tonight, but how about this? What was he doing tonight? So every, well, as he told me yesterday, I gave him a call and we had a chat and I said, he said, look, I'd love to come on. And he, he was one of our best guests, I think. Well, he would have been he after fantastic. you've had seven mango martinis. You're going to be a had, guest, had I known, I would have I would have done a mango martini as a backup drink tonight. Yeah, for sure. So he said he said every Wednesday of Breeders' Cup week, he takes all the staff out for a meal. That's his. That's a a sort of tradition on Breeders' Cup week. So everyone who's here with the horses from Chad's team, he takes them all out. So he said, Nick, absolutely no. I mean, that's that sex that's blocked off. So good on him. Well, you you talk to these trainers and they say we wouldn't be here without the team. Mm. And that's exactly what it is, you know, for uh, to get to that level that and to have so many well, horses like they do, it, it all becomes a family effort and you couldn't get there without everyone that works with you. It is a little bit hackneyed and there's normally only one person's name on the license. But 
I was talking to a British trainer, Nigel Tinkler, who has his first uh, runner this year in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf Sprint. Mm -hmm. He's been training for years, Nigel, but it's his first big horse in a big race like this. And you better believe it, who has got a little bit of a chance, actually. He said, it's like a Formula One team. Mm -hmm. He said, yeah. when that car goes into the pit lane, there's 37 people who are charged with getting a new set of tires on mm -hmm. in no time at all. Yeah. And if one of them gets yeah. the wrong nut on the wrong wheel or makes one semblance of an error, the whole, the whole thing falls to pieces and that's game over. And he said, Everybody it's the same with horse racing. It's the exercise rider, it's the groom, it's the strapper, it's the yeah. person knocking the horse's box out, it's the farrier, yeah. it's the vet, you know, it's the, you know. Everybody. You know, and, and you think of all of the people that come in contact with that one horse from when they're born to when they go into that starting gate. Could be hundreds of people. And that's why it's such a thrilling moment for so many uh, because of the fact that they've all had that moment, that connection with them. But yes, yeah. everything has to be right. Everything has to be precise. And you trust your team immensely. Uh, this is, a, I think, an interesting point from Dorian. How about Brad Cox running nine in Breeders' Cup 20? Kentucky boy done well for sure he has i mean it could just be cox all the way couldn't it Britt? <laughs> it could be you could have a lot of cox winners um and which of, of all his horses which one excites you the most oh well monomoy girl of course I, I have to say that she is the one i'm most looking forward to seeing but i think aunt pearl mm. is his best shot yeah. to me she i think they've just scratched the surface with her she'll be in the juvenile phillies turf um she's undefeated she is fast his main man, Florent Giroux, will be aboard. So I, I'm so looking forward to that because I, I think that she could be any kind of runner. She's by Lope de Vega, yeah. the same Cyrus newspaper of record mm -hmm. a couple of years ago. They, uh, this, These American trainers now, just sourcing their raw materials from the major, major sales in Europe, mm -hmm. they're getting the best horses. But Because the money's better here, they're coming over, they're spending the money as yearlings, they're bringing the horses back here. And I think that that those matchups in the turf races are going to be so much more fiercely contested mm -hmm. uh, over the next few years because of Chad, because of Brad Cox, because of those trainers who are buying the, the raw materials from the best European sales. Well, it's exciting to see really turf racing grow in the States. I mean, I, I think it's on, well, most people think of dirt racing when you think of America, but our, our turf racing is getting stronger and stronger. So uh, that's what I love to see. Are you ready for another promo? I'm ready for another. Is it good? Is it a good one? Do you want me to do it? Do you want me to do it? Yeah, I, would, I, I, can do it? I would love Let's for you to do it. Do you want me to read it in the style of anyone in particular, anything in particular? Oh, could Ooh. you do? Oh, that's a good one. Um, uh, how little, about, do you do a Michael Caine? My, 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 <laughs> <laughs> thrill. I have Lexus as a partner for the 2020 event. I can't really do Michael Caine. <laughs> Lexus provided a fleet, Mark. Did you know this, that Lexus has provided a fleet of luxury vehicles for owners, trainers, breeders, and partners to get to and from the track this week. Lexus has also sponsored wow. one of the coolest ways to watch Breeders' Cup 20. This is what you want to listen up and watch for. The Jockey Cam, presented by Lexus. Experience the thrill of riding a Breeders' Cup race live via the Jockey Cam, presented by Lexus, available in the Breeders' Cup app. Mm -hmm. And, of course, this being cocktails and conversation, Lexus would like to remind you to drink responsibly and nev never drink and drive. Cheers. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. Cheers. Can't really Noted. cheers at that point. Uh, and uh, <laughs> Victor Espinoza in town to ride Princess Noor, the end of food Philly in the juvenile Phillies. Cheers. That was wonderful. Thank you so yeah. much. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well done. No, I don't no. think we can. <laughs> cheers to you. Um, you've got a fan. It says, Stephanie says, Nick is so well versed internationally. What is his favorite race to watch? Uh, the Breeders' Cup Classic. Why? It just never lets you down. It never lets you down, or very rarely anyway. Okay, you, maybe like one in 12 is a bit near, but it's it just, and, and sometimes, so not every edition of the Breeders' Cup can be a great edition, otherwise the great editions wouldn't be great. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you can get through 13 races and you'd sort of thinking, well, what was my highlight? And the classic will just lift the whole occasion. So then what do you make of this classic? I think it's fantastic. What do you the at home make of, it, of this classic? The, the depth of it is wonderful. Mm -hmm. And I think Tis the Law is going to win and win well. I'd rather he was posted. <laughs> There's we have, an audience. We have a small <laughs> audience here. We have a very, very small audience. They are socially distant. Yeah. <laughs> like, okay. Tis the Law. Bounces back. Like every, like every needy DJ 
we need a small group of people making a lot of noise in the background. No, I have to say, can we, we, we have a moment, I know, and, and if you can tell, we um, are having slight trouble getting some of our guests. It is, it is a Wednesday night, mm. you know? They're out to dinner, we, as we saw. We understand. But uh, a big thank you to a lot of people who have made this show possible. The entire Grand Slam social team, they are behind the scenes, just working wonders. Tonight, producer is Molly McGill. Um, so a big thank you to her. She's prepping for her wedding. So, you know, it's not like she doesn't have anything else to do. When's the wedding? A couple of weeks. Next, next weekend. weekend. Next weekend. Yeah. Next weekend. Next weekend. Oh. Uh, oh. And the entire Breeders' Cup team. But we got a special guest jumping in that we, we were just talking about. Look at that. <laughs> we say about how, how the Breeders' Cup Classic can lift you. Well, it surely did last time it was at Keeneland, didn't it, Brittany? Well, that it did. 2015 American Pharaoh. He wrapped up his Triple Crown season with a win in the Breeders' Cup Classic. A grand slam, they entitle it. Victor, just... Take us back to that day because you rode him with so much confidence. <laughs> Hi, guys. Yep. Hi, okay. Victor. How are you? Oh, we're good. It's all, about, it's all about confidence, and it's all about what do I have in the race. And mm -hmm. I remember when I rode American Pharaoh, I was not even like crossing on my mind that that horse he was going to lose. I mean, I. It was I had so much confidence in him that unless even if he has small things that go wrong, he still can win. That's how good he was. And 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 for me as a jockey, that's you know when I have a confidence in 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 a horse that I ride, then everything goes right. <laughs> but so what is this? What is this week like for you? Do you enjoy it? Do you feel, you don't strike me as somebody that ever gets nervous, but you are riding an undefeated filly who's the morning line favorite and who knows how good she can be. So what, what is it like for you? Uh, it's fun. Uh, actually, when, when I talk to others, the, all the connections from, uh, from, the, from this filly, mm -hmm. um, they're all like, you know, nervous and they ask so many questions, right? And for me, it's exciting because that's one I, this, this is all about uh, uh, when it comes to the big races. You know, nervous, it's a good thing because it's exciting. And for me, it's, uh, it's fun to hear all this, uh, the connections, how nervous they are going to the race. But for me, it, 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 it kind of like got me more focused and, and, and excited to get to that point and just to put a good show and and trying to figure out what's the best way and what's the best thing to do for the horse that I ride mm -hmm. to do his best in the race, to perform the best on, on that day, on that race. And especially right now in the Breeders' Cup, which is almost getting closer and closer minute by minute. And, uh, and, and yeah, I mean, this year is gonna be a little bit different because with all this, thing going on but in the way it's kind of a little bit more quiet for me and yeah. uh, you know I just flew here in in uh, in, in, uh, in Lexington uh, yesterday and um, and it's just I'm staying at a friend's house and it's just relaxing and having fun in here but it I looks gorgeous there. wherever you're at it does you and got quite relaxing <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. It's quite nice over here. Uh, I, I feel like I'm living the dream in Kentucky. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, I pretty much went to uh, my friend, Mike Bill. He took me for a ride in a helicopter, a, a whole, you know, uh, around Lexington. And we're just having fun here in the house and get ready for Friday. I, I'm pleased that you're being kept in the style to which you're accustomed, Victor. I'd expect nothing less. Um, I wanted to ask, because because you've ridden some great, truly great horses, yeah. and you can look this year, and we'll talk about Princess Nora in a minute, but I want, to, I want your view on this year's classic. It's a really deep lineup. You can give lots of horses a chance. If you could have the leg up on anything, on anything in that race, who would it be? Uh, maximum security. Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. And why so? Because I just like the way he, the way he runs, and I just love the post outside of him. 
and and that's how I think is how he performed the best when he's outside. Mm -hmm. um, he has uh, to me that's just the best post position they ever have. So he can control the race, mm -hmm. the, the the whole race basically. And um, I noticed like last time where he ran, I was right next to him and he was, you know, I got right like next to him to the outside and I kind of put a pressure on him and he seems like he don't like that and he really like struggled mm -hmm. with some other horses outside of him mm -hmm. and that's what I like about him this time because he's outside has no pressure and then she's he pretty much he can control the race Outside post position. Yeah, outside post. Uh, he's, being a little, he's being a little forgotten about because of the fact that he did not win last out and improbable beat him so easily. So hey, it's interesting hearing a jockey's perspective mm. from that point. And every horse is entitled to one bad run or one defeat. Not a bad run, sure. but one defeat. Yeah, well, yeah. not in the case of Princess Noor. Not in the case of Princess Noor. <laughs> what we you know, what we don't know, Victor, is really how good she is because she's been doing everything in hand and very impressively but we don't really know the strength of what's what's been in behind her only you can really tell us what you felt so how has how has she felt to you she's incredible i, I think um i mean there all these races that i've been riding her i uh, just never let her run i never really have to it it is always those moments that i you know mm, I want to just let her run it. I want to test her, see how good she is, but I never have that chance. So, but I'm ready this time. I'm excited for her because this time I want to just let her run. I mean, I want to go all in. I mean, I can't just save it for any other race. <laughs> this is it. And, and, um, and, and it'd be interesting to see how good she is. But to me, I, I've been riding a lot of good horses and, and I describe, describe her like, probably one of the best feelings that I ever rode. It's a big moment for the owner too, Mr. Zaydan. Can you tell us a little, and it's unfortunate because he did tweet earlier this week that he won't be able to make it out to the Breeders' Cup because he tested positive for COVID. He's feeling okay, but he won't be able to make it here. So I know what a massive disappointment that is for him, but can you just tell us, because you met through the California Chrome scene, uh, what he's like and how big of a moment this is for him? Yeah, it was, it's, it's kind of bummer that he, he was really looking forward to come to the Breeders' Cup. And, uh, you know, I've talked to him pretty much like twice a day, <laughs> how excited he was like to come to the Breeders' Cup. And, um, and you know, just one early morning, he called me there. He said he, he had the coronavirus and, you know, he might not come here. And, and, and it was just, it's one of those you know, moments that like, everything changed and uh but uh mm -hmm. i am just really pleased and happy for him to have this this type of a uh, horse for it because he spent a lot of money before and none of those horses there they're they're like good and he takes some time off and uh we talked about it before there's like just you know stay away for a little bit and come back and try it again and and sure enough we they have a plans and then they come back this time and you just run into this princess Noor that's just is probably one of you know one of the best and and he's just so excited to have the right horse right now and and then that's all it takes like one 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 good horse so there these guys they we keep it in the game hey Victor, you know yeah you're someone who just has this happy knack of just finding that superstar, finding that superstar horse, and you might just have another one here. But you know, you know how there's just some people you can never keep out of the game. You just can't keep them <laughs> out of the limelight. And you think sometimes, well, you know, Mike Smith's going to be quiet this year because he's not coming to Breeders' Cup. You know, we're just, you know, just, he's we're, just too we're, we're, good. He's just too good. He's, he's too good too to good. be here. Um, and you know he might he might just not be in the limelight for a while. <laughs> oh, oh. Hey, <laughs> you can't keep him away. <laughs> no. Oh, uh, big man, Mike Smith. Don't How are you, great man? Are you guys talking about me? <laughs> <laughs> Always. Hey, Always. Mike. Hey, big. Wishing you the best, man, this weekend, buddy. 
Thank you. you bring one home for California. Patty. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> That's the plan. <laughs> That's right. You know, in California, you could see, especially over this past year, I really think that what transpired bonded the jockeys at Santa Anita. I mean, Victor, mm. Mike, can you talk a little bit about that and how you feel like the jocks room maybe got a little bit tighter through the entire pandemic this year? Yeah, I mean, it's been great. You know, we've gotten to know each other, you know, a whole lot better. Uh, uh, different, you know, we're spending uh morning afternoon and and the evening together which we've we've never really done as a whole like that uh and and, and we got a good group here man we got a great group of guys as victor knows man we got some great young riders here and, and uh you know we're 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 good we're good 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 place man really happy uh riding here in california as victor is as well we're still able to compete on the big show and, and do a little traveling well we were able to do a little traveling till now but uh hopefully that'll get back to normal soon and, and uh you know, I was left without any any good one this year. Most of mine retired, you know, uh, before the Breeders' Cup. But but Victor picked up an awesome filly, man, and I, I'm a big big fan and looking forward to watching that 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 juvenile filly race, man. Well, how will you find it harder? Will you will you be okay just sitting and watching and just rooting and and enjoying it? Well, I'm certainly going to miss it, but I'm I'm a big fan of horses and horse racing, man, especially Breeders' Cup. So I'll I'll be excited to watch it. I'll be rooting for our homeboys, and, and hopefully they can they can pull it off. And hey, Mike, you better root for me, huh? I'll be rooting for you, buddy. I'll, I'll, I won't I won't get on because I don't want to put no weight on you. But uh, I'll, I'll, I'll if you're winning, if you're blessed enough to be winning easy, well, I'll get on there and pose. For you. <laughs> He's like, I'll ride if you for some reason have a you know a prior commitment. No. It's just I but we, we were asking Victor this earlier in terms of the classic, but Mike, you've seen so many of these runners in Southern California and across the nation. Like, who are you excited to watch run as a fan? Because at the end of the day, that's what we all are. Well, I'm excited to watch each and every race, to be honest with you. I mean, I, there's some just unbelievable horses from all over the world in each and every race. So they're all wonderful to watch. That's the great thing about Breeders' Cup is each race is like a, a – the best of the best, I should say. So they're all going to be fun to watch. Of course, the classic's always the one that we all want to see. And of course, and I love to see the Europeans on the turf a lot as well. And 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 again, the, the young the young fillies and colts that are the, the up and comers, you know. So they're they're all going to be fun to watch. But of course, the classic's going to always be the one we always really really mm -hmm. put the 110 percent on as far as our folk. Mike, Mike, we we asked Victor who he would ride if he had the pick of any horse in the classic, and Victor said maximum security. Um, where would you be yeah that's a great 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 pick uh you know he there's so many talented horses in that race i'd probably go with authentic uh myself just because i've been blessed to have ridden him once before uh <laughs> but uh but i wouldn't i wouldn't uh, i wouldn't keep uh you know a lot of people are a little bit down on maximum security because he got beat last time but i um, mean he's he's older he's he's a, he's and he didn't even run that bad the other day he didn't run his a race so if he comes back and runs his a race he's gonna be the horse to be Along with it, probable probable's an owl horse as well. Uh, then you got to look for Tis the Law if he can get a, if he can work out a good trip from down on the inside. I look for him to come back and run big. But as well. Mike, you you can only ride one in that race. Well, I, I don't. I can ride all of them. I mean, you picked like so. six. You can't ride all six. You can't but, ride hey, all. Victor. I don't have to pick yeah. one right now. I can just ride them all. You're you're seeing now why Mike Smith has had the career he's had. He is, mm -hmm. his diplomacy skills are as good as his talent. <laughs> Are as good as his talents in the it's saddle. Top notch. <laughs> hey, Mike, I wanted to ask you and, and Victor. You raised an interesting point about Tis the Law down down toward the inside there. So, say you're riding Tis the Law. What do you do? What's your game plan from that post? Me? Yeah. Uh, man, it is tough for him. Um, I would try to get out, get get out of the gate running and just move to the outside as quick as possible. Because if I stay inside, you know, it's, it will be it will be bad because you get trapped and and I don't think if 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 you always staying behind the horses, you got no shot to win. My only shot to win if you ride this a lot, just bounce out of that running and just try to move outside as quick as possible. Gosh, look at all these comments coming in. We've for had, we've had two Hall so of Famers. Many. So many and I've i I've already um, asked uh, Mike Casey's question, asked who you like in the classic. Uh, Carol says, authentic, you're the man, Mike. And I think authentic was his first answer. So we're going to take his first answer. Uh, Stephanie likes improbable. Um, Who they call baby justify. Do you see any resemblance, Mike? Improbable to justify? 
other than their size, you know, Justify was a lot bigger, but they look a lot alike. Yeah, matter of fact, when they're out there on the track training, you 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 would get them confused because they do look a lot alike. Other than Justify was 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 a bigger horse. I was told to not call him Little Justify because he's not little. He, he would be the baby Justify, the younger right, one. Right, right. Justify gotcha. was just big. He was real big. I got it. I got it. Uh, Victor, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, good luck on Friday. I'm so excited to see Princess Noor and uh, if she can continue that undefeated streak that she's on right now. She seems very special. So, hey, good luck to you. Thank you, guys. Do it, Victor. Victor. Cheers, Victor. Do it really okay. <laughs> Here's to you. Hey, but I, Mike, I, I wanted to just sort of give you the opportunity, really, just to talk about that last that last meet at Santa Anita because it, it, it ended on a real high. It was a clean meet. Horses came back safe. A lot of work's gone into that. And I know you're a great ambassador for California racing. And I don't know, just looking on from afar, I, I sort of felt people here should should celebrate the, their achievement a little a little more perhaps than they have. Well, I, I totally agree. I mean, they, they did a tremendous job. Uh, the whole crew there, uh, you know, each and every one of them, I, I can't tell you. Uh, um, we went, I think, without without one mishap, either rather be in the morning or the afternoon. Uh, Aiden Butler just did a great job. Him and his whole crew, uh, got to take your hat off to him. Man. He did a lot of hard work, and, and, and although some of it uh, was a bit of a pain in the butt here and there to do some of these things, but I'm going to tell you, a lot of it really, really worked, uh, and the outcome just shows that it did. Again, we're, and then we go into Del Mar right now, and Del Mar's track is, is, seems really good. Turf course is great. The main track is wonderful, so we should, good Lord's willing, have a safe meet there as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fingers crossed. It's been, you know, all of these protocols that they've put in place that you can absolutely see that they've made a difference. And you talk about all the work put in, especially this year. Santa Anita created the very first sports bubble, which is mm. pretty remarkable. And that's kind of what I was alluding to with all the jockeys being in one place at once. I think they had karaoke parties and played some poker. Who was the big, big poker winner? Well, Aiden, Aiden was the best, best, best poker player, man. He, of course. He, that doesn't surprise me. He won a bit. Anytime, anytime he wanted us. He was really good at that. Uh, but no, he, he really made us feel like it, like it was, uh, you know, kind of being a home environment. Uh, he made it very comfortable, as comfortable as they could. You know, I mean, everyone, we were staying in these these trailers and, you know, it, it sounds rough, but there were those, you know, those actors, those star trailers, they call them. And they, they were, they're like a little bitty mini condo, man. They were great. You had your, you know, your bathroom, shower, kitchen. Uh, it had everything in it, plasma screen TV. And then, then you had a chef that made your food and, we had movie night, karaoke night, poker, poker every night. Living the life. <laughs> Living the life. You started to make it sound pretty good. I know. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds great people, to me. People would have paid Mike. money that to stay there one weekend. I guarantee it. I bet. <laughs> I, I want you to. I want you to reflect a little bit. We don't have a ton of time left on the show, but you are the winningest jockey in Breeders' Cup history. And of all of those Breeders' Cup wins, I'm going to remove Zenyatta, so you can't list that one. Uh, what was your favorite or most memorable? Oh wow! Then you put me on a the spot there. This I could just yes. go through each and every one of them. To be honest with you, uh, they're Breeders' Cup, so they're all memorable. I think always winning your first one with a horse called Lore, uh, who went who went on back to back Breeders' Cup miles, uh, was a yeah. tremendous miler. He was one that could actually, you know, give the best of the, give the the best in Europe a, a fight for their money. He was really that good. He was a serious serious horse. Uh, and then I, I would always say Arrogates, uh, when he was blessed enough to, to pull off the upset over California Chrome, uh, that was a pretty neat uh, Breeders' Cup race to, to ride to ride in and, and to ride him uh, and to beat a horse like California Chrome was pretty special. That was a great race to watch. I mean, that's what I mean about the classic can really just, you know, an already great event can just be lifted. And there's something so atmospheric, especially when the light goes down a bit and you just get that gloaming, that dusk, that different light for the classic and the horses <laughs> come out. And the whole atmosphere of the place just lifts a shade. I know it'll be different this weekend, but we'll still maybe have two and a half, three thousand people here, mm -hmm. and you still feel that. Yeah. The better horses. It's just it just the whole the whole occasion just moves into a different zone, Mike, doesn't it? It certainly does. You know, that's why you always gotta say the classics really the one that everyone everyone mm -hmm. really comes to watch. Uh, even all the people from from uh, that came in just for some say turf races, you know, from Europe and stuff, they all wanna stick around and watch the classic. It's a special race mm -hmm. to watch. Well, yeah, a special horse right behind you in that photo that you're, we're kind of getting a peek of. Oh, little, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there she is. 
Mike, I can't thank you enough for joining us. I know that you're uh, gonna have a very successful Del Mar meet while we're out here, but we miss you and uh, we know you'll be watching, but thank you so much for always being such a, a strong supporter of this industry and the best ambassador we got. Well, miss being there, miss you guys. Everyone stay safe and the safe Reader's Cup, man. I can't wait to watch. Top man. Thank you, Mike. Mike. Cheers. Cheers. The I love how somebody was asking if uh, he was going to be on the commentary because Mike Smith is great on air, yeah, by the way. He is. Right, we, got a, we got a surprise. <laughs> oh! Hey! There's our man, or hopefully oh, with a Mango Martini. Mango Martini's here. I'm drinking <laughs> Manhattan's in uh, we'll, Kentucky we'll, here. We'll take the I Manhattan. Good the choice. Manhattan when you're in Lexington. <laughs> Uh, Chad, we thank you for popping in here. We were talking about you spending time with your team tonight and how important they are to your entire barn all over the place. Um, good luck with all of your runners. Where are you guys at right now, by the way? We're at Jeff Ruby, my good friend, Cornell grad, Jeff Ruby. Many what years ahead of me, I might say, but my good friend, and we're out here at an annual family dinner, we call it, Reader's Cup Week. It always brings us good luck, so we do it every year. When we're out by you in L.A., it's a royal shop house normally, but it's Chef Ruby now, and uh, we had a great dinner and a lot of good karma going on here. I love it. That's what it's about. That's fabulous. And are you can you just like wind not wind down, but can you can you unwind a little bit in the evening and just like take everything out of your head and and just enjoy and relax a little bit and then Absolutely. just give. Yeah, back in tomorrow morning. Yeah, we definitely can. We like to unwind a little bit, you know. Um, really, all the major work's done, right? All the mm -hmm. works and the anxiety over the post positions and all that. So now you just have to unwind a little bit, right? And just have a lot of good karma going in there, a lot of positive glass half full stuff going on. Mm -hmm. Work out a good trip and hopefully win a couple of races. How's your team feeling? I feel like every year that we go into the Breeders' Cup, we're expecting a Chad Brown winner. I'm not speaking for them. I, I just want to know how we're feeling right now. <laughs> yeah, confident. Are we chesty at all? I mean, you can't be, right? The Breeders' Cup, we're, we're humble people. I mean, we're feeling pretty good, right? We did our jobs. Uh, great crew. And win or lose, we know it's a tough event. If we could win one race, we'd be happy. That, that, and that's really the truth. Yeah. Yes. And that's thing because he has so many runners. That, yeah. that one race, you begin to expect them a little bit, right? Do you begin to expect the win to have so many runners and so many winners in the past? Yeah, you know, someone asked me that today. It's like, I don't know expect is the right word, you know? But, like, you go in there confident, thinking you have a good chance, you had success doing this. But we respect the process so much. We respect the Breeders' Cup so much. It really, if you could win one race, you'd be happy. And we've gone in there and won multiple races and been very grateful over it. But knowing how difficult it is to win a single race on this weekend, um, really we'd be happy to win one. Yeah. I mean, you've got loads and loads of good chances. But it, there is... Is there a horse that you, you think so? There isn't a horse, it doesn't seem to me, that sort of simply has to win. You know, it's not a, it's not like there's not a sort of must win horse amongst your group. Does that make sense? Yeah, and I apologize for the close up of my ear here. No, I like I'm it. I'm trying to hear you. I apologize about that, okay? It's a, um, it's, a, it's a strangely attractive ear, I've got to say. No, no, it's not. It's a big ear, I've been told to a kid. But I'm going to say that, um, you know, as a trainer, right, you just go on like who's trained the best, I think. So mm -hmm. it's not so much on the odds or the handicapping. It's when you're watching the horses train going up into a race, who's training the best? And there's a, there's a handful of horses that really stick out that are just moving so well. Like if they're good enough or not, I'm not really sure. You know, I think like Rushing Fall and Sister Charlie are moving really well. Reinvestment Risk, is, it's got a tall order, but the horse is moving really well over the track. And like Dunbar mm -hmm. Road is in a totally brutal race with two like monster horses but she's like moving really well and training well and complexity is going to the races of one of the favorites and i love the way he looks so you have a lot of horses doing well but you just until you line up against everybody and see where you stack up you just don't know 
Yeah. Hey, Chad, good luck with all of your runners. As much as Nick wants to continue to look at your ear, we'll let you go. <laughs> Thanks for having me. I feel a little naked about my mango martini here, <laughs> but I was a little unprepared. Uh, next time. Next time. Uh, next yeah. season. We're going to double down on the mango martinis. You guys say bye. <laughs> all right, we're ready. Thanks. Cheers, you guys. Good luck. Bye-bye. Cheers, Cheers, Chad. Good luck. Thanks. <laughs> we've had some fun surprises uh, we've tonight. Had, we've had some great surprises. How about that? We said we were I not going to go over nine o'clock, and we are right um, on the nine dot. O'clock. How so, about that? Yeah, look at that. <laughs> um, still time. Still time for one surprise shot or shooter. What do you think, guys? M MT, just of course. Not not one back right now. Mm -hmm. No one back, <laughs> guys. What a show! Not just tonight, but in general. This has been a true adventure. I know we're going to keep it going. I love you guys. Nick, Brittany, you guys are experts at what you do. You're charismatic. You're beautiful. Let's end tonight with a nice, which one, strong which, shot. Which, one, which, one, which one's which? <laughs> which one's which? We're going to leave that up to the viewers. Start the poll now. Guys, we're going to do something right now I have not done yet on this show. What is that? I'm going to make a quick shot with both Tito's and Maker's Mark. So I've already combined it because I know oh, that we're in a – Yeah, oh, yeah. I know we're in a little bit of a rush. So we started off with our fresh lemon juice that we were using we earlier tonight. Yeah, we okay. can do it. All right, we're ready. Oh, well, it's got it, it's got some crazy stuff in there too. So it might be a little difficult to follow along with. <laughs> so I actually I went into my refrigerator and because I I have crazy stuff like this, I got a hibiscus raspberry syrup that I made earlier this week. Oh, we don't and have so, that. No, oh, you yeah. don't have that. It's it's gonna it's gonna be tough to follow along with. So this is kind of a yep, special yep. shot here. But I've got hibiscus raspberry syrup, beautiful color, right? A nice kind of sweet tart element. We're going to mm. balance that with some bittersweet Campari, which I love Campari, especially with kind of like sour fruits like raspberry, a little fresh lemon juice, and then our Tito's and Makers. It's going to be a double, double down here. I'm just going to shake this up real fast, and then we're going to garnish it really nicely with some dried hibiscus and, of course, a purple orchid so I could put these to good use. Yes, yes. And who, who doesn't have dried hibiscus in there, Kevin? <laughs> you know, if, if you knew how many crazy cocktail ingredients I've got in my cupboard, you, you'd probably be just as upset as Jasmine is. <laughs> but she's yes. a good sport. She, she understands that I've got my, my crazy cocktail section there. Uh, you're going to see this is a beautiful color coming out. Let me show this to you. A nice... Kind of bright red there. I'm bringing back that fancy glass, and we're going to garnish this with the dried hibiscus. Everybody, yep. Can you hear that? Oh. What? What am I listening for? What is, what is it? That? I think I can hear Jasmine. <laughs> <laughs> you are Next the season. Stay tuned for season three when Jasmine will make an appearance, guys. I'm calling this the final stretch. There somewhere. Final stretch cocktail because we are in the final stretch before Breeders' Cup weekend. That we show. are. Guys, Cheers. 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 to the stars. Three delicious drinks as we round out. This has been a lot of fun and some prizes in there too. I mean, yeah. we weren't expecting Victor, Mike, Chad to drop in. Thank you to all of our guests, Kenny mm -hmm. McPeak, Tom Amos, of course, as well, and Wesley Ward. Uh, this was a lot of fun. But now we got some racing. We have, and we have been asked whether this is the final cocktails and conversation. But no, like a, like a bad smell, we hang around and won't go away. We'll be back for Thanksgiving and for Christmas, and we'll be back right after the Breeders' Cup for a special CNC rap show. So for those, of you, so for, those, the, for those of you lonely, incarcerated, or simply in lockdown, we'll still be here for you. <laughs> but if you want to catch the Breeders' Cup racing Friday and Saturday, you can catch it on NBC Sports and NBC as well as TVG. Mm. And what they really have that's pretty amazing is you can catch a, each contender via one single camera. And that, that's pretty it is. That's pretty remarkable. It is fantastic. All right, let's get people you excited. Can put that, you can put that script away now. <laughs> I didn't uh, even read it. <laughs> I just, um, just while we're at this point, and we are over time now, but I just want to thank everyone who's made this show possible since April. Mainly, I have to say, Mr. Peter Rotundo, who's uh, who's I demanded a set and he gave us this. Whose brainchild it may or may not have been. I will. But he'll take the credit for it anyway. Uh, the whole team at Grand Slam Social, yeah. um, Shona and Molly and Caitlin and Jordan mm -hmm. and Hannah. 
And if I'm missing anyone out, I apologize. No, to Jesse and Andrew who and made, this Jesse and Andrew who made this possible tonight. We have a very different setup, but hey, let's roll out with this uh, video to get you excited for the 2020 Breeders' Cup World Championships on Friday and Saturday. Love you lots. Bye bye. This November, Cheers, guys. the stands here won't be filled with screaming fans, but they'll still be shaking. Don't miss horse racing's ultimate international event. The Breeders' Cup World Championships from historic Caneland. The whole world will be watching and wagering as the sport's greatest stars battle for 14 World Championship titles. So get ready for the Breeders' Cup, live November 6th and 7th, only on NBC Sports.